Hello world! I have now spent a hundred dollars and I am ready to create my cosplay of Toru. I have my reference images ready. I have to make her horns and that means I want something light and durable that can go on top of my head. I've opted to go with an insulation board. I have Foamular and it's something that you can get at any local um, home improvement store. Got mine from Home Depot for five dollars and you can cut it with really anything <laughs> that's sharp. I'm going to double the width by stacking it together and gluing it together with some wood glue because I don't want a more acidic glue that's going to burn through the plastic. I will cut out horns following a template that I will draw. Get a side view and a frontal view so you can see exactly how the horns are created. Then sketch one out, pop it up on the side of your head to see. You will be adding the width using the stacks of foam. So really you just want to make sure the size is about right. So using my head and this base, it looks like it will be about right. And then of course you're just going to need to cut out two of these because you're going to have the other side. I have my insulating foam for five dollars. I have some cheap wood glue. I got some pliers because they actually have a cutter built into them and pliers are great to manipulate. I have some really nice sandpaper. I'm sure this says for drywall. The other recommendation would be uh, lower grit, so 80 grit. To build up the width needed, I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of blocks to stack it so it is three high and I need to make sure I have the ability to cut out two of these because I will need to have another one for the opposite side of my head. So here we go. An X-Acto knife would be better, but I have this guy and I'll figure it out. I now have everything outlined, ready to cut, so I can make sure I save all this instead of having a whole bunch of blocks and more unnecessary stuff to cut through. After cutting them out and stacking them, you're going to glue them together and leave them be so that they dry and are ready to be cut into actual horn shapes. Because the horns are angled off the top of the head, draw out the angle you want and start cutting it away. get rid of differences to make it more even. Oh, man. After cutting everything out to the approximate size you want, we're now going to dremel off all the roughness with this <laughs> homemade dremel end. We're gonna try sanding it. Wait, how do you... in a bag. Get all the pink all over you. Perfect. But you're done and they look so much better. All soft and smooth and dremeled away. Now they have shapes and aren't so cool. Now I have to get the little details of the lines. So I chose this side will be on the left side, this side will be on the right, and now I know where to put the lines. After successfully cutting the details into the horns, get some wood glue to apply a sheen and coat everything to make sure it doesn't get a whole bunch of indentations with all the handling. Why you probably should use a brush. They're all dry. I clipped them once and it made sure that any cooling was 
uh, stopped and then also the other side that was touching the base or the uh, table was able to dry as well so very nice this is just after one night it has a little bit of a scratchy texture but it definitely has more protection you can hear it now I'm gonna do some painting to make it this yellowish tan color and um, emphasize the circle she has around each one using a dark brown. It shows up a lot more yellow, but it really has a more mustard tone. I'm using a combination of these three colors. I have golden straw, saffron yellow, and khaki tan. And I just mix it all together. And I know that down at the base, it will have a darker brown as it does have a little bit of a gradient. The tops are painted. I can't finish painting the underside because, well, it's covered in paint and I need it to dry. But I did want to apply it while it was still wet so I could take out little bits that were stuck in there that would take a long time to dry and also so that it would have a more gradual effect. These were all the paints I used. I used Asphaltum for detailing. For the highlights, I used Cool White. Hooray! They're both drying. While it was still a little wet, I was able to loop it around and do the bottom portion. So it has that gradient up to the light. I'm now tidying up everything because <clears throat> as you can see there's a lot of bleed over from this sort of sketchy way that I painted in all the lines and now I'm just going back over and um, basically creating a highlight by putting a lighter line next to it and then making it skinnier and a lot more refined. So then I also went back and painted some more brown back in just to darken it up a little bit extra. So that means as I go back with the sort of highlighting and tidying marks, it'll look really nice. Now that I have the updated paint job, I'm going to use a matte or clear finish to seal it in because I don't want to have to repaint it. So I'm using this matte Krylon low odor clear finish and let's go. So you want to stand back a little bit because you don't want to be up on it and you want to go back and forth, not just spraying the same location. Now let it dry. Woo. Now with everything sealed on this and pretty, we're going to start making the actual headpiece by making one uniform piece of fabric that basically looks like a tube. I have a piece of fabric that looks to be 11 and a half inches by five. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half and sew it together all the way through. Turn it right side out. And now you have that tube I mentioned earlier. So it has just the one line and then it is a hole down through the center. So now we're gonna lay it flat and it's gonna look nice. To add a little bit of stiffness when I have this all crumpled up to look like the little waves here, I'm going to add a piece of very thin interfacing. This is technically like an iron-on interfacing or um, piece to put other fabrics on. So this is just gonna add a little bit of structure. I'm not gonna iron it, just gonna place it in there and then um, sew it in place. I shoved that on down through, just a little strip of it, and I'm folding in the edges and I'm going to sew it in place so that the frays are hidden. So sew that together. Do the same to the other end, making sure that you have this line on the flat side of the bottom. I'm counting out how many little rolls it has and I'm just folding it up and then I'm testing it on the headband to see how it'll fit across because um, how long you made this influences how many you can make and how big they are. So I sized it up a little bit beforehand to really see how big I would be able to make my little waves. But then uh, once I have them and, and 
the places that I want after testing it and doing it like this. Uh, I'm going to, I have my little accordion um, of what I want and sized out correctly. So I'm going to use a little bit of thread just to stab a needle through so that it keeps the general shape that I want as I lay it out and have my hot glue ready. Make sure to use a thimble to help push the needle back and through. These are helpful. They're around for a reason. <laughs> now that I have it ready, I can sort of tug on the string and the needle on both sides to sort of adjust how I want it and make sure I have it sized up correctly for how it's gonna lay from horn A to horn B. Then, once I have it ready, I'm just gonna start hot gluing. I'll be honest, I first tried it on the top and it doesn't look so good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move it to the bottom because you can still see the headband anyway. So I'll try to fix this. Ew. Ew. But hey, the good thing is no one sees the bottom of this because it'll be on the bottom of the head. Hey, it's okay. So I did it with the horns resting like this and then just delicately tried to process my way along. Luckily I had all the folds in there prior. Um, now one thing that uh, I did as I went along is I used this as a general seam to sort of notate which was the middle and then I have a little less at the front and more at the back because you can see so much of it in the back. So let's check it out. Moment of truth. Oh, all right. So that'll work out because now I'm just going to apply the ribbon at the top and that'll bring up the little extra glue to make sure everything is in place. I did not cut it beforehand to make sure that I would have enough and then once I get to the end, now I cut it. I'm gluing in a clip to make it so it stays on the top of my head. So just open it up uh, and then have it connect uh, at the top point so then you can always fold it in. Glue it in and patiently wait for it to dry. And add two more for good measure, one on the side and the side. There we go, stability, yeah. All right, here we have it. I'm sorry I look half dead because it's super late and also I just look half dead all the time. But hey, horns, and they have a little bit of stability because of the clips and they'll be even more stable with the wig on. Um, so it does have the emphasis of the little maid feature here and the horns themselves, so. I hope you liked it, I hope this was helpful, and I would love to see your creations. Also, stay tuned because I have plenty of other parts to make for this cosplay. One thing included is, hey, this tail. Look, look, it's finished, woo! So I have to uh, put that out. And, oh hey, hey bod, what's up? Um, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see your creations. If this helped you, please let me know. I would love to see what you made.